Hello and welcome to this video. So in our web application now we can load our data clicking the load data button. Although it's okay to see the information like this, obviously we want things uh, at least in a table. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So to make a table in HTML you uh, type table, but what we're going to do first is make a div to surround it for some styling later on. And if I type div dot and then table container, Visual Studio Code will create for me a div already with the class of table container. And inside here I'm going to type table to create a table. And then we need a head for our table. And then we're going to need a body for our table as well. And the way tables are done is simply in rows of elements. There's quite a bit of HTML to type. So in the header of the table we'll have one row denoted by TR. And then inside here each column will have its own header that we need to name. So back inside the browser, the data here, we're going to use most of these apart from the volume, the high, the low, and the open. We don't really need those. The rest of these we're going to use. So the first one then I'm going to type pair. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy this down and then speed the video up a little bit and just fill in the others as well because it's silly to watch me typing out all of these headers. Okay, so saving that then, I'll just check our page and we can see that we've got some table headers. Now I'm quite zoomed in here, I'm on 240% zoom, so yours should appear a little bit smaller at least. And don't worry about the styling for now, we'll fix that later on. Once we have that done, what we do need to do next is inside the table body is we need to create the rows. So the way we do this is using a directive, which tells you to do something with the HTML that we've written. In our case, it's going to be something called a V4. So we'll make a new table row. But here we'll type d-4, v-4, sorry, and then item in KPI data. And what that'll do is create a table row element for every item in our KPI data list. So going back to the browser, then you remember that our KPI data is a list of objects, and each of these objects then will be one of these table rows, and item will represent each of the objects. So for the first row, if you do item.pair, then you get pound US dollar back, and so on. So what we can do now then is the rather laborious task of typing out table data and then we can type item.pair and that will give us then the table data for the pair on our item here. So if I then go back into the browser now and just click load data you can see in our table we get all of the pairs loaded up. Now again I'm going to speed the video up and paste all these in and fill them in uh, so that you don't have to watch me do it very very slowly. So when that's filled out, it should look something like this. Notice the one thing I have done is on the body percentage, I've said two fixed two. So in JavaScript, that just says make this number to two decimal places because otherwise it'll be a big long number with lots and lots of decimal places that we don't really need. So having filled that out then, remember to do TD and not TH here. If we go back into the application, click load data, and what you should get, I'm going to zoom out a bit because I'm zoomed way in, but you should get a table looking something like this, which for the data that we saved in data.json gives us the overview for every one of the pairs, what the candle in question was, the price, the trend direction, the direction of the candle and the crosses and other indicators that we've made here. One more thing we can do now I think is just wipe this uh, json.stringify so that we don't have that on the screen. I'll just go back to the browser, refresh, load data again and okay we've got the table on its own. Okay then, so we're making really, really good progress. We're not far away actually from having a, a live dash that updates automatically and shows the information. But what we should do now probably is apply a little bit of styling to this table. And we'll start that in the next video. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcome as always. And see you in the next one.